What's going on guys, it's Hi with the Upper Left USA and I'm excited to bring you guys today's video because this just arrived in the mail. My new 7 Artisans Photoelectric 35mm f2 lens for the Leica M mount system. This is an interesting lens because as far as I know, this is the cheapest 35mm lens for the Leica M mount currently in production. At a retail price of around $288, this is definitely a more affordable price 35mm lens for the Leica M mount. I'm pretty excited to see what this lens can do, but first off, let's open up this box and see exactly what we are getting. For those who are interested in the lens packaging itself, here is the box that the lens is shipped in. As you can see, it's very simple, a matte black box with minimal branding and some minor information about the lens itself. Getting into the box, we first see a mini screwdriver flathead to do some minor adjustments on the lens what looks like an instruction manual more instructions that show us that the screwdriver is actually meant for adjusting the focus warranty card and last but not least the lens itself Since this is a new lens for me, I won't be able to give you an in-depth review with my personal thoughts from experience. Instead, I'm going to mount this lens onto my Leica M6, take you guys along with me as I get some sample photos, and then come back later to give you my initial first impressions of the lens. So enjoy. Welcome back to the studio. Since the beginning of this video, I've had the chance to play with the 7 Artisans 35mm f2 lens for the Leica M mount system for the past couple of days. And I've had the chance to use it in various conditions, outside, inside, and with various subjects. Like I said, I've only had this lens for a few days, so I won't be able to give you a very in-depth and thorough review of the lens, but I'm going to share with you some of my first initial impressions. First off, let's talk about the build quality and design of the lens itself. I think the first thing that I noticed about the lens after opening it was the weight. The all metal design definitely gives the lens a good heft to it and it just feels really good in the hand. 
Looking at the aperture ring, we see that the aperture ranges between f2 and f16, and this aperture ring does click. It definitely clicks. I said this because I've never experienced a lens with a louder or obvious aperture click than this particular lens. If you have any intention of using this lens for video and you want to change your aperture mid-roll, just know that it's very possible to catch the clicks of the aperture ring if you have a mic in close proximity to the lens. As far as the build quality of the aperture ring itself, my copy of the lens seems to have a slightly loose aperture ring. If I hold the aperture ring and wiggle it back and forth, there is definitely some play. Along with this, if you look at the indication mark on my particular lens, you can see that there is some excess paint on various numbers. These little things just take away from the quality of the lens, and that's really unfortunate. Moving on to the manual focus ring, it definitely gives a better perception of quality than the aperture ring. Everything works as it should, and there is no play in the ring itself. The manual focus ring does offer a good large throw to cover the entire focusing distance, and the addition of the focusing tab is always appreciated, in my opinion. If you remember back in the unboxing portion of this video, I showed that the lens comes with a small flathead screwdriver to adjust the focus in case the lens is front or back focusing. For me, this is a red flag, as it pretty much tells you that the lens may arrive improperly calibrated, or the focusing may shift over time. Sure, this may be a problem with any lens, but I'm just saying, if a lens comes with all of the tools ready for adjustment, that just kind of says something. Typically, this is an easy fix. If you have a digital M, you just take a picture, check the focusing, and if it's off, you just need to adjust. I, however, only own film M bodies, so I can't exactly just check the results of my images on the fly. There is an entire process of developing and scanning the film before I can really see any of my images. This means I have to take the picture, develop the film, scan the film, check the results, then adjust, and then repeat everything again just to double check that everything is working properly. If you don't roll, develop, and scan your own film, this is a huge guess and check process that can potentially take days if not weeks just to get through. Not to mention the huge waste of film and costs in money. All I can say is that if you are a film shooter and are interested in this lens, just pray that you get a good copy that has accurate focusing. As far as image quality, I think that this lens offers surprisingly good results for the price. The lens is of sonar design and features 7 elements in 5 groups. If you've never used a sonar design lens before, they are typically described as having a classic look, and this essentially just means that they are softer and not as sharp as their modern counterparts. That being said, this lens is surprisingly sharp for the price. I'm also saying this in consideration to the cheap Kodak Ultramax 400 film that I was using. Had I been using something like Kodak T-Max that is known for its sharpness, I'm absolutely positive that I would have gotten even better image quality out of this lens. Also note that I really don't have any scientific way of calculating sharpness, so this is really all just opinion based, but I really do believe that this lens offers good sharpness. Sharpness does decrease towards the edges, but it's so slight that I really do not mind it at all. And again, especially for the price, it's really hard to beat. In terms of distortion, yes, it is present, but that's kind of expected with the 35mm lens. There is going to be some distortion in the image, but this isn't an ultra-wide angle lens, so distortion is really minimal and manageable. This lens also features coatings to reduce internal reflections, flares, and ghosting. Even so, it is still very possible for you to experience these things in your images. For this video, I did not go out and shoot with the intent to find these attributes. For me, if it happens, it happens as I'm shooting a film rangefinder. There's really no way of knowing if I'm going to get flaring or any of that. But remember, these things can show up in almost any other lenses no matter the price. If you know what causes a problem, you can adjust your style of shooting to prevent or hopefully reduce the chances of them occurring. All that being said, from my time with this lens, I do have one image that does exhibit some flaring. In this photo, you can see that there is a ring of light that flares towards the bottom of the image. This resulted from having the overhead light above my subject. This is the only real instance of flaring that I saw with my images, but I have no doubt that this issue would be more prevalent if you were to say shooting into the sun or a strong light source. Now let's talk about bokeh. This lens utilizes 10 aperture blades, which should help to produce a more pleasant bokeh rendering. But the quality of bokeh is really subjective. It depends on what you like. To test the bokeh of this lens out, I decided to use the lens in a more portrait scenario. 
Here are two sets of images taken the same way. The first photo is shot at f2 at minimum focusing distance. The second also shot at f2 but a few feet back just to get more of the torso in frame. If you are a 35mm focal length portrait shooter, these images should give you a good idea of what to expect. If you look at the edges of the specular highlights or the bokeh balls, you can see that they are often sharp and very apparent. The bokeh ball themselves are often not really balls, but range in various shapes. Again, it just comes down to your preference in bokeh and what you think is good. Before I conclude this video, I just want to note a few things that I found through my use of this lens that you may find helpful. First, this lens comes with a front and rear cap to protect the elements, but no lens hood. This is my first time using a lens with this type of front lens cap design. The cap is felt lined around the edges and is simply held onto the lens by friction. At first sight, I really like this design. It is simple and elegant. After a few minutes of use, however, I immediately knew that there is a really good chance of losing this cap as it comes off quite easily, so just be aware of that. Another thing to note is that the aperture of this lens changes in full stops. This is disappointing to me because my M mount camera shutter speed also changes in full stops. This just means that I'm not going to have a lot of flexibility when it comes to changing the exposure. I'm unfortunately going to run into a lot of situations where I need an in-between exposure, in between those full stops, and I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. For example, if proper exposure calls for 100th of a second with an f2.2, I'm not going to be able to get this. I'll either have to overexpose at f2 or underexpose at f2.8. Third stop increments or at least half stop increments would have been much appreciated. Again, this is really only a problem for those who use cameras with a shutter speed that changes in full stop increments. If this is not you, it's not really a problem, but again, it's still limiting. Overall, I think that this lens offers great value for the price. Throughout this video, I've mentioned multiple times that certain aspects of this lens is really great for the price, and that is the key for the price. At under $300, this lens is an absolute steal, and I'm just really lucky to have been able to pick mine up at a discount for right at about $208. When considering this, I think that the issues that I mentioned are kind of hard to dwell on. When it comes to 35mm lenses for the Leica M-mount system, the next cheapest one would be the Voigtlander Color Scopar f2.5, which costs $409. From there, the price climbs really fast to just about $5,500 for the Leica Sumalux f1.4. So if you are interested in this lens, the 7 Artisan 35mm f2, you have to ask yourself why you're buying this lens. If you're interested in this lens because it's just about the cheapest lens on the market, then I would say yeah, just pick it up, it's a great deal. If you're looking for a lens with great build quality or that pinnacle of image perfection, be real with yourself, did you really expect it from a lens that costs less than $300? If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below with any questions that you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thank you for watching this video, I'll see you guys next time.